Discover the secret to results that last. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Hey everybody, this is Ratchet Goes Healthy and welcome to episode two of Mindful Mondays where we are reading through James Clear's Atomic Habits. We're gonna jump right into chapter two. I hope that those of you who are following along, you have read chapter two in advance. If not, that's okay. I will go over the bullet points of this chapter. And side note, if you have been following my channel, you uh, might notice that there's something new back there. Tune in for uh, episode three of Fearless Fridays to learn more about this beautiful thing that just arrived in my life. But we're not doing that today. This is Mindful Monday, so let's jump right into it. Chapter two is titled, How Your Habits Shape Your Identity and Vice Versa. So first of all, he says that changing our habits is difficult for two reasons. We try to change the wrong thing. We try to change our habits in the wrong way. This chapter is all about addressing number one. We try to change the wrong thing. To explain that a bit, he goes over three levels at which change can occur. Outcomes, process, identity. Most of the changes that we see happen on the outcomes level. The habits are the process level. And identity has to do with our beliefs and worldview when that changes. So in other words, outcomes are what you get. Process is how you get it. And identity is what you believe. So he's got this super helpful uh, little like chart here where you see outcomes are on the outside and then you've got your uh, identity in the middle, like your core, and then the um, process is in between those two. So I thought that was pretty cool. The main issue is that most of us focus on the what, we focus on the outcomes. But the key to lasting change, he says, is to focus on the who. Who do you want to become? In other words, there's always an identity behind the habit. So let's like put this into practice. Instead of me saying, I'm trying to run every day on my new treadmill. I can shift that slightly, shift that mentality and say, I am a runner. So of course I'm gonna run on that treadmill, right? What do runners do? They run. Another example is the goal is not to read a book, it's to become a reader. Now, obviously this has a negative side too. If we've told ourselves certain things about our identity, then we're less likely to make positive changes if the things that we're telling ourselves are negative. For example, I'm not a morning person or I'm overweight and unhealthy. Everything's gonna feel like a battle to try to change that if that's who we truly believe we are. This is sort of a radical concept for me just because I think for most of my life, I've been telling myself that, well, if I look a certain way, then it must mean that I am unhealthy or I am overweight or all these sort of negative things that describe my identity. So I've been trying to practice like flipping the script a little bit just to see if that would change the way that I perceive myself. So like a very, very simple example is I was talking with a friend the other day and I was mentioning how, yeah, you know, my back kind of hurts a little bit and I, you know, I may have to see a chiropractor like I'm getting older. And his response to that was, well, you're a cyclist. So you're really like always at these aggressive angles on your back. So you should probably do certain stretches, da, 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 da. I was stuck on the fact that he called me a cyclist. And I was like, it, it did not feel comfortable to be called that, which then told me that I don't see myself that way. I still see myself as a fat girl who rides her bike every day, who's trying to become a cyclist. When the reality is, you guys, I have been crushing it for like the last two, at least two and a half years with my bike, with the Peloton and also my actual bike. I've done 50 mile bike rides. I probably do on average five miles a day of cycling. I am a cyclist. I don't have to look a particular way in order to be a cyclist. So I'm trying to practice things like that, like reframing how I talk to myself and how I perceive myself. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy and it still feels a little uncomfortable. Another part of this chapter is clear explaining where our identities come from in the first place. He claims that everything is learned and your habits are how you embody your identity. And I love this, he says that every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. And that's on page 38. So the more that we do things that reflect the type of person that we wanna become, the more we learn to trust ourselves and trust that identity. In other words, we, we're building up evidence of our identity. And the best part is that you do not need to do this perfectly. 
You do not need to be perfect. He has a great analogy here. A bad habit is a vote for a particular identity and a good habit is a vote for another particular identity. You don't need a unanimous vote to win an election. You just need more positive votes than negative votes in order to sort of win your identity or become that person. I love that because there's room for making mistakes. There's room for failure. There's room for picking yourself back up and starting again, right? Like it's this whole uh, cumulative effect of our habits. So it's a simple two-step process that he closes us out with. The first is decide who you want to become. And the second is to prove it to yourself with small wins. Habits are not about having something, they're about becoming someone. So who do you wanna become? For me, after this chapter, I made a list of certain qualities, certain character traits, just like this ideal version of myself that I've always wanted to be. Some of them include athletic. I'd like to be somebody who is considered an athlete. And I don't think that you have to look a certain way to be athletic. Like if I'm on that bike every day and I'm like working towards like a 5K or a half marathon again, I think that I can be an athlete. I think I, that we can all call ourselves athletes. If I'm running, I am a runner. Even if I look like this, I am a runner. But I also wanna be somebody that's humble. I wanna be somebody that's brave. And that's where the whole Fearless Fridays comes in, right? Like those are votes toward the kind of person that I wanna be. And if I keep doing good habits, then I can become that person. I hope that you can too. And I hope that you found this helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts. If anything resonated with you, if things didn't resonate with you, please comment below. I'm loving this book and I'd love to know where you guys are at with it. And that's it for this installment. I'll see you guys next week for chapter three.